started streaming the live event. The live event is starting. Live event is starting. Looks like live event is starting. All right, everybody. Hi and welcome to this live stream. I hope the connection is okay and you can see me and you can hear me. If not, please write that in the comments. I want to say I'm so excited for this live stream, but the truth is if we're going to be open and we're going to be honest here, I'm super, super tired. This is 9 p.m. here in Tel Aviv, Israel right now. I woke up at 6 a.m. and then had a bunch of client meeting and it's the, the, the last day of the, the promo for the new course. And so this day has been really, really tiring. And so I'm very tired, but this is a new presentation that I did for the first time um, three days ago. And I did it on a webinar and people registered and the comments were so good that I was like, I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna do this this time on YouTube. I'm gonna live stream it so everybody can see it. You don't have to register or anything because I think that you're really, really going to enjoy it and gonna get a lot from it. So and I've got to look at the comments a little bit before I started the stream and I'll take a look at them again. And I think people were saying like, um, is this still valuable? I got the new course. I, I hope I can still learn something. And somebody said, I'm like 18. Am I still going to learn something even if I can't buy the new course? So yes, don't worry. Listen, we're going to mention the, the new course and we're going to talk about this and the difference between that and, and the Webflow Masterclass. But this is not the point here. You're going to learn something and this is going to be very valuable for you. Whatever the case, even if you don't buy anything, you're still going to learn. And I think this is going to be very valuable for you. I'm going to share stories and I'm going to show you stuff, some of my work that I've never sh shared before. And so I think that you'll get a lot from it anyway. So I encourage you to, at the end, we're going to do uh, a live Q and A and you're going to ask questions. and I'm going to answer your question. By the way, this is hopefully is going to be around one hour. This, this presentation. I will have to say, I'm, I'm taking a look at the comments right now and I'm seeing hello from Bangladesh. Rah. Okay, yes, I can see you. Um, okay, so, all right, awesome. Hi from Peru, Brazil, it's 3 p.m. Okay, awesome, amazing. I have to say though, that when I'm doing the presentation, I'll be very focused on the presentation. I can't always be looking at the comments. Now I know some of you are gonna say, this is recorded, he's not really doing this live stream. So I thought about bringing in a newspaper and showing you kind of the date, but I'm not <laughs> gonna do that. Uh, just, you know, I'll, I'll interact with you in the comments later. Right now I wanna focus, I wanna deliver the presentation. Let me see if I can see how many people are live right now. I don't know right now so right now is 134 i don't know i don't know how i can see how many people are in here anyway i trust you guys i trust you guys are going to enjoy it um all right let's get started let me share my screen with you guys all right so we call this presentation how to design websites client heavily pay ten thousand or more for all right let's get started so here's what we're going to cover today i'm going to share with you basically th three secrets that i learned after doing freelance for over 17 years and some of this stuff, this is the real stuff that's helping me get, and I've shared on my YouTube how much I earned. Last year I earned over $300,000. Um, some of that was from my course, but at least $200,000 were from client work, mainly web design, and so that's really what I'm gonna be talking about. As I've mentioned at the end, we're gonna do a live Q&A and we're gonna talk about some special surprises for you guys, um, so yeah. Let's just, let's just get going. So I want to mention that I know why you're here because I talk with a lot of you. Um, I read most of the comments on my YouTube channel and a lot of you are engaging with me on Instagram and I know from hearing to you. So here are some of the things that you're telling me, which is exactly how I felt. So I don't feel like I have what it takes to create website. I could charge high prices for it. Like I'm not good enough or I can spot amazing website when I see one, right? I'm spending my time on Dribbble and Instagram. I know what is good design, but I can't do that. Even though I know how it looks, I can't recreate that type of work myself. And client calls are the worst. I struggle to justify my rates, communicate my value. It's a confidence thing, right? It's really clients 
handling clients is really hard for me. And some of you are just saying like, all right, that's good, but my clients will never pay these prices, right? So you can talk about $10,000 per website. My clients will never pay these prices. And I, I used to think that exactly the same. Um, basically you're saying, I want to be really good. I want to learn. There's, can you recommend some book? Can you recommend a blog? Can you recommend some Instagram accounts? Uh, there's just too much out there. I, I, at the end of the day, I got to do some work. So how can I learn while managing all the other stuff that's out there? So at the end of the day, I think what both you and I share in common is that we want to create work that is really meaningful, that is strategic and that is impactful for my clients. We want to be paid accordingly so that we can make a good living, but really be valuable. Just, not just, you know, get a lot of money because we want a lot of money, but because we really provide a lot of value for my, our clients. So as I said earlier, my promise to you is I'm going to give you my best stuff. Even if you don't purchase anything, I'm sure that you'll learn a lot. I'm sure that you'll have at least one aha moment. And as I said, this, this presentation, like two days ago, um, comments were really, really good. And so I'm sure that you guys are going to enjoy it. So what I want you know, though, is, um, I need your focus. I know that you're might be doing this while you're eating lunch, working at the office or doing whatever, doing your gym activities right now. So I need you to focus again. It's going to be like one hour. So stick with me guys. Cause I'm sure that if you listen to what I have to say, if you grasp a few of these concepts that can really be like game changer for you guys. So you're ready, you're ready to focus, write like focus in the comments or something. There's going to be delay. I'm not going to be able to see that anyway. All right. Okay. So a little bit about me. I assume uh, a lot of you guys know who I am because of my YouTube, but for those of you who have recently joined or don't know my story a little bit. So just for a little bit of context, I'm a freelance designer. I've been doing that for over 17 years. Um, but as a full-time freelancer, it's only been the last six years. Um, and again, as I said, I've been uh, sharing my journey and my revenue on the YouTube. YouTube I've been doing for like four years. Um, I'm also married. Uh, I've got two sons. I'm living in Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, and I've started Flux Academy. It started off as a YouTube channel, which I started four years ago, uploading daily videos, starting more like a vlog type of thing, and then turned into kind of a more educational type of channel. And uh, last year I've launched the Webflow Masterclass and since then we've helped over 1200 students to really change their career using Webflow. And so, and now we're really turning this into Flux Academy, like an online school for design. So this is a little bit about me. Yeah, my work has been featured in magazine, you know, logos work, that's good. All right, so now maybe you've seen, I've, I shared this a lot, this is one of the recent projects that I did for a client work. Um, this website, I was, I charged for it $24,000. Um, and this was a really, and this is actually, we're now making phase two of this website. So this is actually going to grow probably into something like $50,000 website. Cause now we're expanding into a few more pages and I've shared this and I've actually shared more projects on my YouTube channel. You can see case studies for other, um, 10, 20, $30,000 websites that I did for my clients, but you know, it wasn't always like this. So just to give you some perspective, I want to show you this website. One of the first website that I designed back in 2009, this is amazing flash website interactions. Do you guys remember the good old days of flash, good old days of action script. So this is a website I did for a musician back in Israel. I've actually, let me show you, I've actually wrote this admin with PHP. So this was the admin of the website. Um, and this website, um, I know that you think it looks amazing, but even though it looks amazing, I think they only paid me something like $300 for it. Not only they paid me $300 for it, I was working for on it for like two or three months. And at the end of the day, back in 2009, that was my cell phone and that was my MP3 player. My dear iRiver, which I explained to everybody, was so much better than the iPod. Anyway, uh, so this, this story here is that um, this band, I, after we launched this website, this amazing website, they invited me to one of their concerts and uh, uh, somebody stole my bag with my MP3 player in the concert. Later, I found out it was actually the drummer. And I ended up spending the $300 I made on this website just to buy a new 
I River for myself. So this is a really, really sad story how I lost all of my website money, revenue, because they stole my MP3 player. And this is a true story. This is a real true story. So back in the day, back in 2009, as you can see in this photo, I had way less style. And even though it looks like I'm playing poker and holding money, the truth was that this is when I was working in an advertising agency. This is actually a, a company night out. And I was making way less money. I was actually making less money than my wife who worked at the same company, but she was like a, an account manager, so she was making more money. Um, but I was working late every night and I was really frustrated, you know, because I wanted to, I wanted to start a family. I wanted to, you know, um, be able to support us. And instead I was like spending every day doing work that I don't like for clients that I don't like. Um, working at a at a company that I don't really like, and I was really 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 frustrated. Then looking back at it, there were some things that I thought were true, and I think were holding me back. And now I realize that they weren't true. So I want to share them with you because I think maybe some of you are thinking you are you're also believing some of those things. So first of all, I thought that you need to be born with talent. I got this. I used to have this mentality of you either got it or you don't. And um, I thought, obviously, that I'm just not one of those people who had tons of tons of talent. Um, and so it's, it's this way. It's like I'm doomed. Um, I also thought that if you want to be the best designer, you probably need to go to the best design school and spend four years there. Um, and so I did that because I was really motivated and I really wanted to be a great designer. So I went to the best design school in Israel, which is kind of like internationally recognized. I spent four years there, spent tens of thousands of dollars on the way. And just to figure out, and while I did enjoy and learned a bunch of stuff there, I realized that it's actually not true. It's not necessarily to become world-class. You don't have to go to a world-class school um, like and spend four years there. Now, one of the things that I used to think, right, I live in Tel Aviv, Israel. I don't really know what you know about this place, which is in the Middle East and has, it's a very relatively new country with no visual culture whatsoever. And everything here, if you walk down the street, everything here is ugly. Really, that's, that's the truth. Uh, it's a great city, by the way. You're super welcome as a tourist. Great nightlife, great food. But in terms of visual culture, like everything here is so ugly. And... I used to think that like I, when I live here, nobody here values design. You pro I should probably move to London or New York or San Francisco or Holland or London or, or some place where they really value and, and design is part of the culture because here design is totally not in the culture. And I, was, I always thought that this means I won't be able to find good clients here. I will always struggle with clients. But this is turned out to be completely wrong. Can't be worth from Peru, I see. Um, I've been to Peru. Trust me, it's pretty much the same. <laughs> Maybe not worth, but it's pretty much the same. Um, all right. I And obviously, just because I spend too much time on the internet, you know, <laughs> on design blogs, I thought that I need to have the perfect desk, computer, software, room set up because, you know, oh, yeah, all the designers, all the cool designers have that. So maybe if you're in that, maybe if you have the right gear, then you can really, you know, do great work. But this is, of course, also bullshit. All right. So everything that I've mentioned turned out to be wrong. So now I want to talk to you about after doing this for 17 years, I've, met, I, I've managed to kind of find out three things which I actually think are really true. Okay. And those are the things that I want to share with you today. And if I get to convince you and to share and to, to get you to believe those secrets, then I think that your time is well spent here. Can anybody guess what the secrets are? Do you guys can guess? Can you write in the comments? Like who, what are the secrets are? All right. I can't, I, I, I don't see any secret here. All right. Let me remove this notification out of the way. All right, let's get started. So secret number one. Selling websites is actually hurting your web design business. And this sounds a little bit unintuitive, but let me explain what I mean by that. So when I got started doing freelancing and working on a website for clients, basically I had two goals for the project. 
First of all, I wanted to design something that the clients love, right? I don't know, in Israel, there's a saying, the customer is always right. I don't know if this is something Israeli or something global, but that was kind of like the mentality. They pay me, I want them to be happy, right? How are they gonna recommend me to somebody else if they're not happy? Um, so I want them to be happy, I wanna be validated, I want them to tell me that I'm doing good work, right? So let me do something that they love. But then on the other hand, I also really wanted to do something that I love, right? Because I'm doing design because I love design, because I'm passionate about this. I wanna make something beautiful. I wanna make a portfolio piece, something that I can you know, put in my website and show my friends and be proud of. So that was what I was aiming for, right? Either pleasing them and pleasing myself. But turned out <laughs> that these things are actually contradictory right? You can have them both because when you're trying to please your client, basically you're going to end up doing exactly what they say. So they're going to start saying things like, you know, make the logo bigger or, you know, move this, or how about you try this? And then you end up doing what they say. And then you end up hating what you do. And then you start suffering and then you're not proud of your work. And then you hate yourself, you hate your clients. And this basically leads you to this place, to this result. And this is I, you probably know this. There's like so many accounts with like designer jokes where it's like uh, the clients are always the bad guys and the clients are always pushing us to work for free and do what they tell us and they sit behind our back. And it's, it's like it's funny. I used to think, I used to say, oh, yeah, that's my life. But today I'm like, no, this is today this is not my life and it's basically because I've changed from the reality of trying to make my clients happy and myself happy, trying to do something that I love into thinking it, thinking about it in a completely other way. So the truth is, here's, here's the problem here. The truth is no client wants a website. This is the truth. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, oh, I really want a new website just like they don't wake up and say, I want a new logo, right? Usually business owners, people with money, people who are running the business, they want their business to be successful. Usually, by the way, that translates into they want to make money, just like you, right? They have a business, their businesses to try to make money by serving their customers or something like that. And so usually they have problems like how do I get customers? How do I convert customers into paying customers? How do I make money, more money out of each customers? How do I make my customers happy? They have a lot of things that they actually want. A website is not one of them. A website can be a tool to help them achieve one of those things, but it's not the website that they actually want. Now, sometimes they will tell you that they want a website because they don't really are fully aware of just like you know, people go to psychologists, sometimes they don't know what they need. But when you dig a little deeper, you understand what they really want. So here's what I understood. There is this concept of vitamins versus painkillers. And I found out these two images because I thought like this would, this would help explain the idea. So let's imagine that your goal is to be healthy or survive or not to die. Let's say this is your goal in life, which we, by the way, we all are, right? As humans, what we try to do is not die, right? So somebody can sell you like this healthy, nicely healthy breakfast, which is nice. Looks mm, yummy. Good. I want that. Somebody else can sell you. I will save your life. I, you will not burn. You will not die today because I'm going to turn off the fire. Do you understand the difference here? One of them is something that is nice to have. It's a vitamin. It makes you a little bit more, you know, a little bit healthier. One of them is a painkiller in the sense of I have something that I really want to avoid right now. Something is really painful is happening to me right now. I'm burning in fire. My house is burning and somebody is going to save me and somebody is going to rescue me. Making that switch between something, offering something that is nice to have and a website is nice to have. Yeah, why not? I'd like a website. Yeah, everybody has a website, right? Everybody knows that you need a website these days. But a website is nice to have a painkiller, something that's going to help my business survive. That's something critical. That's something that I want. That's something that I must have. And that's something that I'm willing to pay a lot for. So 
to provide a painkiller solution, right? To become a painkiller, there is a few things that you must understand. So first of all, you need to know what they're actually trying to achieve, right? If you want to save them, if you want to help them achieve what you want to achieve, you need to understand what they're looking to do. So what are their goals? What does their roadmap looks like? So where are they actually going and what are they trying to do? So you need to also understand what their current problems and risks are as a business. So as I said, every business is mostly in the trying to avoid getting out of business. And, you know, there are many things that can make you go out of business, right? Cash flow problems, employee problems, not having customer problems. There's a lot of risks. And we as people, we are very risk averse. We're trying to avoid risks. As much as, much as you st start understanding and uncovering what their problems are, what their risks are, what they're afraid of, as business owners, then you can start really giving them solutions that they really want, that they regard as painkillers. And also understanding what their biggest opportunity is, right? So basically, you want to understand what is the best outcome for them and what is the worst outcome for them. Based on that, you can start developing a painkiller solution. In a sense, sometimes that solution can be a website, but a website that really solves one of those strategic problems. Now, I want you to remember something, and this is something from, I actually stole this sentence from the story brand framework. Basically, any story about life or death is boring okay and this is really important this is i i think this is a strong kind of sentence and quote for life okay think about any story that we tell ourselves like every movie that we see like i don't know what you know the matrix lord of the rings whatever every story at the end of the day is life or death if the hero does not accomplish what they want to accomplish something horrible is going to happen and because, as I've said earlier, we're humans, we're, we're, uh, we're wired for survival. That's, that's how our brain operates. And so when we talk about these life or death situation, and I'm talking obviously in a business sense right now, this gets the attention of the other person that we're talking to. Okay, now we're talking about something interesting. When we're talking about, you know, imagine like a, a movie like the matrix but instead of trying to save the world he's trying to whatever lose weight on a diet that's boring that's boring because what happens if he doesn't succeed there's not there's no risk here right so we don't even want to watch the movie and that's the same when you're having a conversation with a client what are you talking about are you talking about something boring or are you talking about something that is you know life and death for their business so how do you, so here's what happens when you make the switch. When you make the switch from vitamin to painkiller, here's what's going to happen. So when I was starting, the, when I was selling websites, what happened is that my clients regarded me as a service provider. They told me what they want. Like they told me, hey, do this and do that. They expected me to do what they meant. Um, I was being charged, I was charging hourly and I always try to please them. So I told you, that was like my initial goal. But once I started to sell them actually strategic solution to their problems, now I was the expert, right? Now I was hired to lead a process, right? And part of that process was to uncover what the goals are, what the process, what the risks and what the opportunities were. Um, and I was charging for value because now I was either saving their business or giving them like a huge business opportunity. So I was able to charge for that value and they respected my opinion. So that was a huge, huge, huge change. So finally, when I made the switch, I could create work that I actually loved and the client loved because instead of focusing on what I love personally, and instead of what focusing on, you know, the client loves green and I hate green, we were both loving to solve the, the problem of the business, to solve the strategic problem. At the end of the day, that's what the client loves, right? And that's what I love because that leads us to a design that is more than just beautiful. It's meaningful, it's impactful, and it's moving the needle for the client's business. So, you have to incorporate strategy into your process, right? I, I heard a lot of designers, 
specifically, you know, designers that are working remotely, I think are a little bit struggling with this because the way that they usually work is by sending um, these questionnaires or, or having these kind of like quick emails about, hey, here's what you need. This is describe your business and so forth. But when you conduct a workshop, and when you make that part of your process and by workshop i mean you sit down with the uh, a bunch of the client and their team so that you can start learning from them then you can see the dynamic between them you can start learning from them this their story but also what they're aiming for their goals their ambitions learn about their brand and when you take them through a strategy workshop you can everything is getting clarified in terms of the goals and people are getting aligned, okay? So you do the workshop to understand the goals and to understand their customers and to create alignment. So as I've mentioned before, some clients will come to you and they'll, they'll say, we want a website. But when you ask them why you want a website, then maybe one of them will say, yeah, because our website looks crappy. The other person will say, no, but we actually, uh, we, we, ha- we want to talk about this new product. And the other person is going to say, well, you know, actually we, we should get more leads. Um, then when you have that kind of a conversation you, and you're trying to please everybody, you're going to get a mishmash of a client, uh, a mishmash of a website that end up not doing anything for, for anybody. And so, Part of the, re- the reason that you're conducting this strategic workshop is to align them and make sure that you're working towards one goal and everybody's agreeing upon what that goal is and that this is really the most important thing for the business right now. All right, so you have a process, you have this kind of a uh, strategic process and workshop that you're presenting through them and you're going through this. Again, it makes you look like an expert, right? They'll ask you, how do you build a website? You start off by conducting a workshop to learn and you have like a whole process about how to get the goals out of them and that makes you an expert to them. All right, secret number two, talent is overrated and will only take you so far. This is so great. I'm I'm so going to, I'm so going to enjoy showing you. (laughs) I'm a little bit embarrassed, but um, all right, here goes. So back in 1999, right? Wow, that was a long time ago. It's like 20 years now. I'm getting very old. Um, I used to go on the internet and I, I really wanted to be able to make these kind of drawings. So there was this digital artist called Saijun and I really loved these drawings and I was like, ah, I was reading all the tutorials. I even bought a tablet and I was, I was like, yeah, I'm going to make these drawings. And this is basically what I came up with, all right? So I know this is not incredible. Don't, don't laugh at me, but I was, you know, I was reading the tutorials and I was like, look, she's got a highlight on the hair. I did highlight on the hair. Why, why doesn't it look the same? I mean, I don't understand what, what am I not doing wrong, like right, wrong. Anyway, again, this fed into my belief that you know you need some talent and um and if you don't have talent you're never gonna make it and i thought like i don't have the talent but i kept reading these you know these tutorials and trying to understand how these people think and i got into a recommendation about a book and this was the book it was called the drawing on the right side of the brain a course in enhancing creativity and artistic confidence by the way this is i still recommend this book this is really an incredible book that basically teaches you, I don't want to even say how to draw, but it teaches you how to look at things differently, how to look and how to draw like from from the vision. Basically, it has um, an interesting kind of perspective, which is basically you have a good eye-hand coordination, right? Because you can write. So there's no reason why you won't be able to translate what you see with your eyes into the paper. You already have this co- coordination. And I couldn't believe this because again, I thought this had to do something with talent, but by reading this book, so again, this is what I was able to do in June, 1999. In 2000, I read this book and within like four or five weeks from reading this book, I was able to actually draw kind of like much more real, um, you know, portraits and like 
see where the shadows should be and how to actually draw like real life. And then two months after that, in August, I was actually, you know, <laughs> being able to actually do some digital drawing, which are, you know, maybe not as good as the one of Saijin that I showed you before, but it was like much, much closer. And I was like, my mind was blown here because this is just like the trajectory. I've been trying to like improve my drawing for years without success. And then just by shifting the perspective and understanding how to see things differently and what I need to be looking at, in just a few months, I was able to like grow tremendously and improve like very, very fast. Now, why, why am I telling you, um, why am I telling you this story? And, uh, Christian, I saw that you put the book on your Amazon card. Good for you. You're not going to regret it very, very fast. So here's why I'm telling you this. Everybody can go and dribble and try to copy a trending style. Just like I was like looking at Saijun, I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy Saijun and, and do what he does. I know that you guys, because I was like that as well, looking at dribble and I was like, ooh, that's really cool. This drop shadow, ooh, this perspective mock-up of an iPhone. That's really cool. I want to do that. And you can look at that and you can try to copy what they did there, but that's not going to help you become a better designer, right? By trying to understand, like just copy style, the, the outside of things without understanding the fundamentals, you can't improve that way. You can't even copy properly that way, okay? So you have to understand the fundamentals and the fundamentals in design are basically composition and layout, colors, typography, visual communication. You know, we're basically, we're in the business of visual communication. We put stuff on a page or on, on something and we need to communicate some kind of a message. We need to understand how to work with that. And we have to understand, you know, the basic user experience principles. If you do not have a good grasp on these fundamentals, you'll never be able to become an amazing designer, right? You have to learn how to understand. And it's, it's, as I said, it's, it's a shift in perspective, right? Learning to see the things that matter. But the good news for you guys is that this shouldn't take you four years, right? Of design school. This is not why you go to design school. This is stuff that you can learn from yourself, right? And improve. And it does take some practice because it is a craft, just like, you know, I showed you with the drawing. It is a learning uh, process. But once you start learning and focusing on the right fundamentals, the trajectory of your learning is going to be super, super fast. And I'm talking weeks and months rather than years, definitely not four years. And I believe this is so important because, you know, I like this quote from Picasso, which is learn the rules like a pro so that you can break them like an artist. A lot of people are so concerned with, you know, uh, how do I break the grid and how do I, you know, create innovative, whatever typography. And those people never even learn to master the, the core fundamentals of how to use a grid before you break the grid, how to use type correctly before you start being experimental with motion and, and, and stuff like that. So I think that understanding the rules and understanding the, the fundamentals is crucial if you want to become a pro and then even an artist. Okay, secret number three. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Um, I see the book is still strong. I knew this, this book is going to be an amazing secret. Just this book, buy it and it will change your life. Secret number three, guys, you can charge a lot more money for the work that you're currently doing. This is mind blowing. Please write this down. This is also going to change your life. All right, so listen to this story. So a few years after the photo that I showed you before, I was not working at a, an advertising agency. I was working at a branding agency. Still, I didn't have that much of a style. At least I grew a beard here. Anyway, so I was working in this branding agency. It's actually one of the good branding agencies in Israel. Um, and the, the person at the top, saw, he was my boss. And something really weird happened when I started working there. Because as I told you, before I got that job, I was freelancing on the side. I was doing a little bit of branding work, a little bit of website work. As I've mentioned, charging super low prices, like $300, $500 was like a good project for me. So I get this job 
at a branding agency and I keep doing the same branding work, right? I did not become more like talented or my craft did not immediately change just because I started working there. But what was weird to me is that they were charging like, you know, between 50 to a hundred thousand dollar for a branding project that I was working on. And I, it blew my mind. I was like, dude, I'm doing the same work. How, how is that possible that they're charging like a hundred times more than what I'm charging? And it wasn't until Sar actually took me into the client meeting and I started seeing how he communicates with the clients that I understood that doing the work, doing the actual design um, is actually just half the, half the work, okay? So design is just half the work. The other half of the work is doing sales, all right? Getting clients abroad, the right clients, knowing how to present your work, Okay, because if you're doing great design and you don't know how to present it and how to sell it, then clients are just not going to take it. This design is never going to see the light of day. Okay, you need to understand how to get feedback. This is so crucial. This was so in this point, I think like Sarah's advice to me was life changing because up until that point, when a client used to tell me something is not good with my design, I used to be frustrated and think that the client is, is an idiot, the client is an asshole, the client doesn't understand anything with design. And Sarah told me something very simple. He told me, you know, first of all, the client knows their business and their client a hundred times better than you. They're living this business for like years and years and years. Also, he said, Doing this project with you is just one thing that they're taking care of. They've got a hundred other problems on their head and they don't know always how to communicate stuff. And the fact that they don't know to explain what's not working right now does not mean that they're wrong. They just don't know how to communicate it. All right. And it's your work as a designer to under, to know how to pull that feedback from them, to ask the right questions, to listen, to try again. And do that with a positive vibe, okay? This is so important. If you don't know how to get feedback to collaborate with clients, you don't have a chance of working with high-value clients and charging high prices, okay? Because at the end of the day, we're, we're in the service business, okay? It's consulting, but it's service. And they need to be happy, not just with the design work, but with the whole way that we manage the project how we set expectation, what's going to happen, what is going to be presented, how is it going to be presented, and how do I, you take the feedback, and so forth. So this is so, so important. Managing the project, managing the relationship with the clients, this is as important as doing the design itself, okay? So basically, it comes down to communication. The thing about communication is that you can start doing this right now. Okay, you can start mastering those things. You don't need to become a better designer. I mean, obviously, becoming a better designer is very important, and I encourage you to do that. But I've seen your work. A lot of you guys, you're obviously undercharging the work that you're doing right now, okay? And so, okay, maybe you're not going to go from $300 project to $10,000 project tomorrow, like with your next client. And to be super honest, I didn't make this switch as well. You know, I moved from 300 to 1000 to 2000 to 5000 to 10,000 to 30,000. This is the, the way that it works, but you can make that step. But improving your design skill without working on your communication, soft skill, client relationship skills is meaningless because you'll not be able to raise your price. And so I encourage you to start raising your price right now because the design skills that you have are good. You're gonna push them forward, but they're good. All right, so let me sum up what we've been talking about right now. Three core secrets, understanding, insight that are crucial for you to understand. Do not sell websites, okay? Sell strategic painkiller solution. This is crucial. Second, do not worry about talent, okay? If you focus on learning the fundamentals, you'll improve tremendously, all right? And three, you have to invest in learning the other half of the skills so that you can charge more for the work that you're already 
know how to do. Okay, wait a second. I need like, uh, I need a break for a second. How are you guys doing? Tell me in the comments. What's up, guys? I was talking so fast and I was so concentrated. All right, I see Chris, loving the tips. 30K for a website. Whoa, that would be something. Yes, Chris, that is something. I hope to see you there pretty soon. It's possible. You're on the way, dude. All right, all right. In my experience, you have to plant and you have to harvest them. All right, Linux, I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. Great so far. Okay, let's keep at it. All right, so basically, it all comes down to process, okay? How you work with your clients from the strategy to the design to handling all the process. And basically, when you have a, a process, when you've mastered a process, you're gonna be just great. And this is your way to success, all right? So now let me ask you this. Would you like me to share my process for designing high value website with you guys? I'm looking, I'm, I wanna see you say yes in the comments. If you wanna see, if you wanna know my process, let me know now. The force is strong with you. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, so at this point, I know that most of you know that this week we launched a new course that's called the $10,000 website process, which is exactly that. It breaks down the process that I've kind of perfected over the last six years, and it gives you the exact process step by step. And so I wanna share with you exactly what's inside. If you've been considering, I wanna show you what do you get and what's inside. So basically I've been spending the last two months working with a beta team to make sure that the course is good and it's valuable and it's working. And I got this feedback from Ethan who said, this is incredibly valuable. Never felt like the course was so perfect for me. And Tony said, I loved every second of it. I literally actually gave it to Chris Doe as well who said, I really appreciate the thoroughness of this course and I learned a bunch of stuff I didn't know. So that made me happy, that made me confident about this course so that I can share it with all of you. So I wanna share what's included. So basically, most of the course is a video course. It's 66 videos that I've recorded, actually not here in a proper studio so that you'll have an amazing, amazing sound. It includes 12 hours of premium content. This is not stuff that's on my YouTube. This is stuff that I never shared before, the actual step-by-step -step process. And you get lifetime access. You can watch this whenever you want, tomorrow, in a year, next year. You can watch it whenever you want on the iPhone, on your computer. So basically, that's the core of the course. Now, in the course, here's what we cover. The first module is basically how to design a 10K website, and it's basically an overview of the process, the mindset that you need, which clients this process works with. The second module is the strategy. So we talked about this. You have to start with a strategy, and in this model, I'm taking you the exact step-by-step, -step. you know, how I run my strategy session, what questions I'm asking, what do you need to figure out, what do you need to align, how to get and understand from the client what visual direction they wanna go with. All of that is in module number two. Module number three is how do we take all this strategy and turn it into a story? How do we turn it into content? Like what pages do we need? How do we create a good value proposition? How do we tell a story, again, that's interesting enough? And I'll tell you the exact method. I'm breaking down the process of the story brand method. So this is, this is really, really good. In the fourth module, this is basically the module of, you can call it wireframes, user experience. Basically, we're gonna structure the content in a useful way. So basically, we're gonna create the wireframes, and this is exactly how I do that. The fifth module, the fifth module is actually, for me, it's my favorite module. I think it's like the heart of the course because this is how to make the website beautiful and memorable. This is the, the module that covers all the fundamentals that we talked about, right? Um, the color, the layout, composition, coming up with, with amazing visuals, working with photography, icons, all of that stuff, we cover that. This is the biggest module in the course. 
Six, we're gonna talk about how to develop world-class website. This is basically how to manage the development process. We do not go into development. This is not a coding and I do not teach Webflow on this course, but this is basically how to manage the process because as a high value consultant, you're gonna be expected to make sure that the website ends up looking exactly like you want it to. So you need to understand how to manage that process. And in the seventh module, this is everything that's client related that I just mentioned, right? How to sell to the clients, how to, um, how to manage the feedback, how to manage the project, how to manage multiple projects at the same time. So everything regarding client, um, client relationship and all of that is in the seventh module, all right? So that material, everything that you get in the video is the exact stuff that helped me generate over $200,000 last year just from web design project. So this is, this, this is gold. Honestly, this is gold. I got a bunch more just like in the last few days since we've opened like so many more testimonials. I didn't get to put them in this presentation yet, but this stuff is really, really gold. All right. Now, usually for personal workshop, when I teach that stuff, I just had like a, a three day workshop in Kiev. The participation price was $2,000. All right. So this stuff is super, super valuable. But the good thing is that, you know, when you're getting this as a, you can get it as a discount when you're getting an online course, but having this, the value of a three day workshop with me is an incredible, incredible value. Right. So this was kind of like the core of the course. But when I put this together, I was like, I want to make sure that you've got everything that you need, right? So what else do you need to be successful? All right. So the first thing that I've decided to add as a bonus is all my personal docs. So all the templates, proposals, all the personal spreadsheets, um, everything that I used when I do my web design with my clients, I'm giving those to you. You can literally just download them, keynote, um, PowerPoint, whatever you want, you know, just change your, your logo, add your logo, and you can use them immediately plug and play on your next client project. All right. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I added was like the, the most question that I get, um, on these last few days is, do you cover how to, you know, how to get clients, right? I'm pretty good with the design. I want to, I want to understand how to get clients, right? So I have to say up on like the purpose of this course is not marketing and it's not finding clients. However, because this is such a popular demand and because so many people want to know how to find clients, I've cr added here um, a, a private webinar recording that I did for students, which is a 60 minute video about how to find and close amazing clients, how to understand what niche to operate in and how to niche and how to find those clients. So this is a recording that comes with the course as a bonus. All right. The fourth thing, third, third, fourth thing is I understand how many of you don't have a good design portfolio. And honestly, I was looking on YouTube to see if there's any comprehensive guide to building a good web design portfolio and I could not find one. So I've created a training specifically for design portfolios and I've added it to the course as, um, as a bonus. Again, this is, I think that just this video is incredibly immensely valuable. Okay. And the last thing, which is, I think one of the most important thing, I should probably put this as bonus number one, the private 10 K website process, Facebook group. And we're probably going to open up a Slack group soon. But the point is that, you know, information is great. Let me just put the camera here. All right. So information is, is awesome. And learning that stuff and going through the videos is a core of what you have to do. But one thing that I learned by going to uh, like a formal design school of four years is that one of the greatest ways to improve fast is to get feedback, feedback from other designers. And by getting feedback from other people and from me personally, I think this is crucial for your success and going to help you succeed much, much better. Now we've done this with my previous course with the Webflow masterclass and that Facebook group turned out to be immensely, immensely valuable. There's people are helping each other constantly. People are getting help and feedback super, super fast. People are hiring each other. People are sharing projects. So I actually think that just this Facebook group, and it's very probable that 
soon, in a couple of months, I'm going to separate the community aspect, just like other people are doing, maybe like the future and other people, and they're charging monthly just to be part of the community. But right now I'm giving this to you for free with lifetime access to this community. Uh, so just this alone, again, I think is val more valuable than the whole price of the whole course. This is incredible. And again, I think this is a major, major part um, of the value here. So all this value in total uh, is, as you can see, it's, it's incredibly valuable, but I've promised there'll be special bonuses you know, for, for people who stay here and, and today is actually the last day of this promo of the bonuses, all right? So this basically ends tonight. So the, la the two things that I've made, which are time limited, is first of all, the chance to work with me, all right? So I never do private coaching and stuff like that. Usually it just, it would cost me too much. Um, but I'm going to randomly pick three students all right, from the people who purchase before tomorrow. And those three students, I'll be working with them personally for six sessions to work with them on their client project to make sure that they understand exactly how to, um, how to implement uh, the process, that they are working successfully. They can you know, work with me and talk to me about anything. So this is really, really, really a one of a time opportunity. I've never offered th this before. And I think this is going to be really, really incredible for the people who are randomly picked. By the way, I get like, I got <laughs> during the last few days, so many messages. Oh, can you please pick me? Like this would be really, I really need this right now. So I just wanna say, Tomorrow, I'm going to do, I'm just going to take all the emails and do a random, I'll probably post this somewhere so that you can see that it was really randomly picked, um, but this is going to happen tomorrow. So if you want to be one of the three students that are going to be working with me personally, make sure that you join before tomorrow. All right, the second thing is just up until tomorrow, if you get, we've created a bundle for both this course and the Webflow Masterclass, so you can get it at 50% off. Um, this is incredible. This is basically the biggest uh, discount we ever gave for the Webflow Masterclass, and so, and probably the last time that we're going to do this. So if you wanted to, you were interested in the Webflow Masterclass, you wanna get them both, now is probably the time to get them both. So total value, even without the last two bonuses, which are immensely valuable, was over $5,000. But as I said, you're getting this for way, way, way less. Um, specifically, if you join before September 16th, you'll be enjoying the extra bonuses. Um, so basically, those are the options. I think that you should have the link, this bit.ly link uh, below in the description. Now, guys, I'm so confident that this will be super valuable for you that I'm offering a money back guarantee, 30 day money back guarantee. If this, there's absolutely no risk for you. All right. So you can walk off <laughs> from this presentation today. Um, you don't have to buy anything obviously, but if you think that this might be a game changer for you, I encourage you to take this risk, make this investment. If this does not work out for you, just ask me for a refund. There's no problem whatsoever. I offer this on the Webflow Masterclass as well. And I know from experience that it works for people and I'm very confident in this course as well. So I wanted to remove all risk from you. We just want you to enjoy this and make this investment in yourself. All right. Here's this, uh, here's what I got like a few days ago from Paul after Webflow course did this magic with the 10 K website process class. Even after 10 years experience, I'm learning valuable lesson. So thanks Ron. Thanks Paul. You nailed it again. You too. I just want to show you this quick. This is basically what happens. If you click the link, I want to show you how um, simple it is to join. Basically, it will take you less than two minutes to get access to everything. So you can scroll down if you want the, the bundle, the bundle for both courses, or you can just click enroll. You'll be redirected to check out. Basically, just put your, your details here. And um, let me show you how that looks. Yep, so you create an account. Basically, you put in your password and <coughs> bang, you're in. You click continue the course. Obviously, you also get an email with all the details. So here you're inside. This is the bundle. So basically, when you're in the bundle, you have on your left included courses and bang, you've got access to both courses. And 
as you saw, it was like less than two minutes ago. So in basically in five minutes, you can have access to all that information. All right, time for some Q and A guys. All right, so please put your questions in the comments. I want to review some questions that I got during this week, which were very popular. So I'll, I'll do them. Oh, by the way, the price, it was my bad with the screenshot. The price is not 674, it's 642. So it's actually lower than what was in the screenshot. I initially had a bad calculation there. Sorry about that. Anyway, let me, let me answer some questions. So first one, and I saw this question in the beginning of this presentation as well, is what's the difference between the 10K website process and the Webflow Masterclass? Basically, the easy way to understand this, let me switch to camera. Um, the easy way to understand this is you can look at them as kind of like step one and step two. So step one is actually the design process, okay? That's the, 10, the 10K website process. You meet a client, you design a website. That's step number one. In the development side, this is basically step two, all right? So as I said in the Webflow, in the 10K website process, you have to oversee the development. You can develop it yourself with Webflow, which is what I recommend, but you can also hire somebody else or you know work with another platform, do whatever you want. So step number one is the design process, the 10K website process. This is step number one. If you want to develop your website with Webflow, which again, I recommend it will make your work faster, more efficient, more profitable. If you want to do that, that's step number two. You can't start get started with Webflow if you don't have a website design, right? Webflow is basically a development platform for designers. So you develop once you have the design ready. You can get started there. So this is step one, step two. I hope that, that makes sense. All right, next question is, dang, dang, dang. Where's the next question? All right. What kind of software will I need? All right, so basically, I, in, I, on purpose, I've made this course kind of like software, I don't know how to say this, software ignorant or like software, ah, I forgot the word, software agnostic, all right? So I, while I do cover the tools that I work with and make recommendation and I do explain the difference between the various tools, in this course, we do not dive into how to use this tool. So I make the assumption that you probably know how to use Photoshop or Sketch or Figma or something like that. Um, if you do not know anything, any graphic software, you probably want to pick that up before you join this course. But assuming that you do know how to operate a specific prob um, software, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so whether you work with XD, with Figma, it doesn't matter. The, the, what's important here and what we cover is the process, how to use the software, like what, like, not how to use, like what to do with it, what do you want to do with it, okay? So this is what we cover and you can work and you can use this process for with any, with any software that you want. All right, what else do we got here? Do I need to know how to code? So nope, you don't need to know how to code. As I've mentioned before, this course, the 10K website process is not about development. I would say that it is helpful, just like anything else, because you're de designing for the web, if you understand what's going on in terms of web technologies, if you understand the possibilities, I think that you can be more creative. I think that it's helpful. Um, so not necessarily knowing how to code, but if you understand general concepts and if you know what's possible, with current technologies, I think that's very helpful. So it's not a must, but I do think that, you know, it's helpful. Um, what else we've got here? What if I'm a beginner? So as I said, this course does not assume, I know that most of you did not go to four years of design school. So it was designed with beginners in mind, even though as you've seen, even people with 10 years of experience can still learn something new from this course. It was designed for people who didn't have um, a lot of experience and education. We do assume that you know how to operate a basic design software, but it's okay if you're a beginner, okay? Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. All right, this is time for me to move into the comments and answer you guys' question, right? All right, do you cover information, architecture, and strategy behind that? 
Okay, so as I've said, we do have a module about the wireframing. And when we talk about the wireframing, before that we do talk about the information architecture. How do you want to structure? Do you want to make uh, you know, a one-pager or do you want to make multiple pages? How you think should think about navigation in general? So we do cover that in the structuring module of the website. All right, Ezra, do you have a recommendation for sending emails to client? My emails come to my client's spam folder like all the time it's on a custom domain hmm good point I do not cover that and I I never had this problem um, so no I do not cover this um, yeah honestly I don't know what to say um, Rosie what if I don't have any experience working with clients yet so I do think that it's okay if you don't have experience with clients yet, assuming again that you know how to operate a design software and you can create the design. Um, I think it will be okay. I think actually it might be, you know, there's like when people learning sports, sometimes when people have experience, it's harder to teach them because they have the habits, the old habits that it's hard to break. So maybe if you don't have habits of working with bad clients and managing the relationship badly, maybe actually it's going to be easier for you. Um, obviously, there's going to be probably um, a confidence thing that you'll need to build up as you'll need to build experience, but we do have video talking about building confidence. Um, and so I think it shouldn't be a problem. Um, all right, will this live video be posted on your channel? Oscar, I think I think it will. Uh, I'm not sure. I think this would be automatic. If not, I'll yeah, this should be probably posted. Um, Arnie, I've already started the Webflow course. Should I go back and stop? I already have portfolio and some clients, but will the 10 process course force me to update it? So Arnie, as I said before, you know, the design phase is be usually before the uh, is usually before the development phase but you're saying you're already working you already have clients you already have a process if the what's urgent for you right now is to build the website you know how to design you just urgently need to build so learn by building and then improve your your client project process and design process later you know if assuming that you don't know both i would recommend you start with one then move to two but if you already have one right? And most urgently, because you don't have two, number two at all, um, probably makes sense to start there. Uh, Octavian, how do you see this course helping a senior designer working on complex project? Is this course for beginners? Um, all right, so Octavian, I said this before. The truth is that when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about I don't know if to say beginners, but people with no formal um, with no formal education and people that are currently working on project in the scale of 500, 1,000, 2,000 um, dollar and want to move up into $10,000 project. Um, that being said, as you've seen, and, and I have some more, a little bit more testimonials from people who do have 10, 15 years of experience and still learning a lot from this. And so I don't know what I can say is if you want to check it out, first of all, um, in the website, you can click to see the curriculum. You can see all the videos. If you feel intrigued, sign up, go through the videos. If you feel like you know everything and it, nothing is new for you, then ask for a refund for refund your money. No problems. If you feel it was valuable for you, then enjoy it. As I've mentioned, I think just being in that community of getting feedback and just the community is worth the, the money of joining right now. I think this is an incredible deal. And so, you know, it's up to you. Um, Michael, how do you export from web design to web dev? We do have a video covering the whole export of assets, optimization of assets. We do cover that in the course. So yeah, Brian, I'm in the three to five trying to get to 10 to 20. Then Brian, this is, you're the exact fit for this course. You're the one I was thinking about when I try to build this course. All right, Marcel, what's the best way to get in touch with you, Instagram? So, uh, Marcel, if you're in the if you're in the course, the best way is probably either 
through the Facebook group. If not, by the way, I didn't mention this, but all you guys, if you're going right now, you're clicking the link in the description, you go to the sales page, you've got questions, there's this the Facebook Messenger thing on the bottom right side. If you've got any questions, write me there. Um, might take me a while to get to answer everybody just because there's a bunch of people who write me messages all the time, but I will see it eventually, I'll get to you, so you've got, you've got questions, put them there. When will you release advanced Webflow course? Will pay 500 range. Sorry for caps, business Momo. <laughs> All right, so honestly, I think the, I really wanna update or actually recreate the whole Webflow course. And so I'm thinking about how to do that. Just add, I'll probably not create a separate advanced. Um, I'll just add more modules to the Webflow course and hopefully that's maybe coming next quarter, depending, I don't know the date yet, but that's how it's going to work. Um, all right. Do you do an interest-free payment model for the last three months? I'm asking because you already have one, but it's the Webflow Masterclass only. There is a payment plan for the, um, for the 10K website process, not for the bundle because it's discounted and it's expiring tomorrow. There is a payment plan, but the payment plan is actually a little bit more expensive than the upfront payment. You actually get like 25% discount if you pay upfront. Otherwise, you can pay with four payments of, I think it's $97. You can see it on the website. All right, Buzzkill. Hey Flux, how long on average do your project take from strategy to final design? And can you give me some time frame on how long every process should take ideally? All right, this is a good question. Usually, I would say that it takes maybe about two months from kickoff to from kickoff to until the website is actually live. This is usually takes around two months, and if you put in probably the sales cycle, like usually we get we get started talking before, then we meet to understand what exactly do they need, and then we send the proposal, and then we negotiate. That would also take a month. So. I think from lead to complete website, usually it's a cycle of three months, something like that. And usually I work on something like maybe three projects at the same time. So this is basically more or less how it goes. All right, Sarah, really enjoy this video. Great course. Thank you, Sarah. We love you. I love you. All right, thank you for coming. Ignas, run just a thought. Teal block at the beginning of the grid at the top actually looks like a progress bar of the whole presentation, but it doesn't. Right, I honestly, thank you for that. I did not have a lot of time to invest in this new grid for the presentation, so I did this really quickly, but thank you for your feedback. I'm gonna redo it, thank you. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. What else, what else, what else? Rob, how do you work with clients who have absolutely no idea about design and their ideas are stuck in the 90s? That's an interesting question. Um, I wonder if they're stuck in the 90s. I wonder if their clients are also stuck in the 90s because some clients you might seem old fashioned, but that's the industry that they work on. And in that case, maybe I'm not saying that the website should look like uh, the 90s, but the I think that part of when we're doing the research and the strategy, we're covering how do their competitors look like? And um, if their competitor, if everybody in their marketplaces look, looks like the 90s, then I would have to be honest and ask myself, maybe that is what it takes. Maybe changing that is not the right thing to achieve the objective goal. I don't know. Um, I would start with research and I would really ask these questions and I would remember the advice that I got from Sar um, before when he mentioned that the the clients, a lot of time, that's their business, they're living it. If they're stuck in the 90s 
and their clients also stuck in the 90s and if they really know their clients then maybe that's what they need if they're stuck in the 90s and that's ruining their business then i think that it's your job as a consultant as an expert to educate them on what's going on in their business and in their market by showing them what the competitors are doing and how the the good design helped their competitors to beat them if you can do that you'll be bringing them a lot of value i think all right brian wow i'm really fast when it takes me four days to get through the strategy and proposal um blah, 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 blah. when working alone how to approach your design critically and improve on it so as i've mentioned working alone so two things here first of all Feedback from your client is crucial. You never really work alone. You work together with your clients, and I discussed this in the course. You're always going to get feedback, and that feedback will help you create better design. Feedback from your client will help you do better design, so you're never really alone. You're collaborating with your client. Second of all, it's really important to be part of a community, to have other designers that you can share work with, and just get out of your mind sometimes you look at something for so many days and weeks that you can just you can't see it anymore and you can't see where it fails and what's good and what's bad so you need a different eye you need to be part of a community you can be part of our community or you can be there's i'm part in general it's like a bunch of facebook groups of designers in israel and we share stuff and we get feedback from one another so you need to find yourself a community community is invaluable you need to be part of a community all right, Tony, do you talk about recurring website management payments? Yeah, I do. I think in the class I have a, um, a video about how to structure the engagement after the website is lunch and, and kind of like recurring, recurring and retainers and all that stuff. I do talk about this, even though I personally don't like doing this, but this is just like my business model, but I do cover this in the class. Uh, Bazkyo, what is your best tip on how to make clients take you seriously? The answer is take yourself seriously. I mean, if you take yourself seriously, I think other people will take you seriously as well. All right, guys, it is 10, 10 p.m. here in Israel, and I'm like, I'm so tired. But honestly, I'll probably have to go now and ask, answer all the questions that you've sent me in the... <laughs> in the chat in the facebook chat messenger type of thing all right so i'm going to close off this stream for today thank you so much for joining it's been a pleasure for me thank you for engaging in the comments it's really really fun for me um and i hope this was valuable for you so thank you all it's been really incredible time with you as a community during the whole week loved it and i will see you next time bye bye